In this video we present our work on a new model for synthetic vision based crowd simulation. This paper is about crowd simulation. We propose a new control loop for algorithms based on static vision. We use a gradient based approach to steer agents according to what they see. Our solution shows significant improvements with respect to previous synthetic vision techniques and also with respect to previous velocity based techniques. We can generate high quality trajectories which avoid the typical artifacts of previous approaches. Agents respect personal distance and no emergence of too strong unrealistic patterns. In our model, agents are steered according to what they see. Agents are equipped with a synthetic vision mechanism which allows them to perceive the surrounding obstacles. For each pixel, we compute the distance to closest approach and time to closest approach. We define a cost function which allows detecting pixels presenting a risk of collision based on the TTCA and DCA values. We finally compute the partial derivatives of this function to determine the best motion adaptation. Iterating on this continuously produces these trajectories. The images on the right show the vision of the green agent. Note how the agent combines speed chains and rotation chains to find the best motion adaptation. Now let's take a look at the model parameters. Our cost functions depend on four very intuitive parameters, which are used to control the motion anticipation, the minimum distance to keep from obstacles, the speed adaptation, and the orientation adaptation of each agent. Here, on the left, the parameter setting makes the agent adapts its movement early and keeps a large distance to the obstacles. On the right, using an opposite parameter setting, the agent adapts its movement later and keeps a smaller distance to the obstacles. On the left, the parameter setting makes the agents to prefer to adapt speed over orientation. Consequently, the trajectories generated show important speed variations and no big turns. On the right, the parameter setting makes the agents prefer to adapt orientation over speed. This results in big turns and few speed adaptation. Actually, they move most of the time at their comfort speed. An important aspect of any synthetic vision-based model is the agent's camera resolution. Here, we show that our model has less sensitivity to downsizing camera resolution when compared to a previous model based on synthetic vision. Our new vision-based technique allows agents to be steered in complex environments which mix static and dynamic obstacles. We compare our results to OSV and RVO2. In this first example, the agents need to traverse a sinuous corridor to reach their goals. The obstacle's cost computed by the red agent is shown at top. We can notice how the obstacle's cost function and consequently its gradient help the agent to identify and avoid potential collisions. The goal cost makes the agent reach its final objective. Note that no waypoints are required since our control loop is enough to steer agents through a relatively complex environment such as this one. In the other models, most of the agents get stuck on the first turn. In this and the following scenarios, we can notice that our model explores a wide range of adaptation strategies. Some agents slow down, others accelerate, and others turn, which creates an impression of more individuality in the agents. RVO2 is purely geometric and fails to handle correctly the symmetric situation. OSV handles correctly the situation, but the strategies of each agent are similar, making a strong pattern emerge. Such a pattern is maybe too strong to be realistic. For the same scenario but with a noisy initial position to disrupt symmetry, RVO2 is able to handle this scenario. However, we notice that agents get too close to each other at the center, which might seem an unnatural behavior. In this scenario, our model makes the agents adapt their speeds either by stopping to give way to the moving obstacles or by accelerating to avoid an imminent collision. In our view, some agents stay too close to each other after stopping to wait for the obstacles to pass. Moreover, for RVO and OSV, we see agents falling into local minima and entering the wrong corridor. In this scenario, we can observe that all models lead to formation of lanes. Nevertheless, OSV presents strong patterns with lanes very distant from each other, whereas in RVO, those lanes get very close to each other. Our model provides an intermediate solution. No strong patterns are produced and at the same time, agents respect the personal space. 
Now we increase the complexity of the previous scenario by adding some obstacles. We can observe that in our model some agents become blue, meaning that they slow down so as to group with each other, forming traffic lanes. This allows them not to get stuck behind the columns or being carried away by the counter flow. In the OSV model, strong patterns are again observed, but still lanes are formed. As for our view model, agents are not able to form lanes and some get stuck for a while behind the obstacles. In this other scenario, diagonal lanes emerge for our model as the groups cross each other. The formation of such patterns can be observed in real crowds and is acknowledged in the literature. For OSV, the diagonal lanes can be also observed, but at the cost of strong adaptations as well as strong and make unnatural patterns. RVO makes minimal adaptations with no strong patterns, but the agents don't respect personal space at all. Here, four groups of agents want to switch positions. It's interesting to see that, for our model, agents are able to keep a natural global follow towards the goal, even when the density increases. The RVO produces visually unpleasant geometrical patterns, which appear quite unnatural. OSV ends up with interesting grouping of agents, but way too large avoidance distance, also quite unnatural.